thank the Lord this morning and we give him praise and we honor him for his faithfulness and um, his graciousness and for all his mercy on all of us. We're so grateful. And we also thank the Lord for our Sunday team that prayed for us this morning. Uh, they've been awake at their own time, 4 a.m. and then 5 a.m. praying, even in this cold winter. We thank the Lord for their lives. Um, and I pray that we too will pray for them in turn as they pray for us. Amen. So we continue this morning um, with our teaching on Matthew chapter 7. And by the grace of Elohim, yesterday morning we looked at Matthew 7, 1. And we will continue to see how far the Lord will take us. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless you for your love. We ask, Lord, that you speak to us through your word the light in your word the deliverance in your word lord may it be shed abroad in our hearts in yeshua jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah amen matthew chapter 7 the bible says from verse 1 judge not that ye be not judged and Yesterday, the Lord helped us to look at, you know, forbearance, tolerance, accommodating others, and then being careful because we might fall into such. And also, to he encouraged us through the word that for those of us who think they are more spiritual, um, restore those who are weaker in faith in the spirit of meekness considering ourselves so we we're able to see what our lord is trying to tell us and we continue again in verse 2 says for with what judgment ye sh well, for with for with what judgment ye judge you shall be judged mm. so if you do not take care and you do not heed to what the lord is saying he says look this, the judgment, the same judgment you're giving to anyone will be given back to you. And the none of us want to be judged. And none of us want that. Therefore, don't do it. And with what measure you met, it shall be measured to you again. So to what extent you sit down, talk, condemn, um, judge other people, speak evil about them, crush them, it will come back to you in equal measure. And brethren looked it. You know, sometimes we think we're the only wise people. You know, that's why the Bible says um, that no one should esteem himself more than they are. Not at all. It says, don't esteem yourself more than. Sometimes we think others don't see. It's only us that see. Sometimes we think we are the only ones who have the authority. Others don't have the authority. But just know it that you are just one out of millions that Elohim has created. So if you could see this cup as um, beautiful grace is written on it, white and some gray color and blue color, so will others see it. So what is the Bible saying to us? Just take it easy with other people. And he says there, And why beholdest thou the moat in thy brother's eye? So let's look at some scriptures. It says, For what judgment and measure? Now, brethren, this is very, it's very scary. When you think that the measure you're giving to other people, you would be measured. The things you've condemned in the past and you're doing them, people will find out in a split second. They will catch you out. They will remember your words. Even if you've forgotten, they will. They will go and search. You know what happens when um, people are trying to go into offices, especially the politician. People go as far back to search and then <laughs> everything dig them out from their great grandparents and they don't they don't they wouldn't mind going to classmates who know everything just to make sure they are, they don't win they bring them down and anything so there's nothing hidden under the sun so be very careful especially when we are big talkers and we're too quick so that's why we, the Lord is encouraging us to have control over our spirit. When you look, look well before you leap. 
don't just go straight you know some people before they know it is out there for what measure it's very scary so what it means that if i judge people wrongly i'll be judged wrongly that's what it means so no make no mistake about it and then it means i have opened a door and satan can cash in on that door and exercise a legal right so let's not do that but rather let's do what the bible says let's remember when some people have done something maybe in ignorance they've done things or they've copied other people to do it or they have their own reason why they did it but they can't explain to the public why they're doing it or they don't have sit down and then look first but please most importantly if people have done something wrong don't repeat it be very careful yourself and then that's why the bible says in the book of romans chapter 2 1 to 4 let us read it says we are and then therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judgest doeth the same thing mm. Don't say people are proud when you're a proud person. Because it's easy to say it. You know, it's quite... Let me tell you why it's easy to identify it very quickly. Because it's your natural attribute which you don't know. It comes out of you just like that. It will be very easy to spot it in other people. So not because in yourself you've seen it as something not right. But because he's in your persona. So you spot it in other people quite, quite very quickly. You know, that's wisdom. Check. You will know it. People who deceive are never at ease. Because everything going into their ears sounds deception, deception, deception. Why? Because at every time they will deceive. So when you're talking to them, the first thing is that you're deceiving. Because they do it is part of their lives so it says um here but we are sure that the judgment of god is according to truth against them which commit such things and thinkest thou O man that judges them which do such things and doest the same that thou shall escape the judgment of god no or despised thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leaded thee to repentance. This is why where I want to bring out is the grace of God that brought us to repentance, brethren. That we are who we are today is the grace of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not by power, nor by might. Not because we're too righteous. Not because oh, we made up our mind to do. No, it is the grace of God. Amen. Therefore, let's allow that grace in other people's life. Hallelujah. So he says there, I think as that woman, when you judge other people and do the same thing you've condemned, you know, some people come to there and say, oh, those days I was blind. I didn't see. Oh, so you can now see. Glory. I thank God. But make sure you're seeing rightly. Make sure you're not going back to the things which you have left behind. Make sure that the things you left that were not expedient, you're not going back to pick them up again because you've watched, because you've followed, because you, you, have, you have left the faith, because you're compromising, because your, 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 your God is letting go. Please, let's stand strong in all. Second Corinthians 10, he says, For we dare not ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. This is the thing. It's all about hypocrisy. Don't commend yourself. Some people take joy. Look at Paul talking here. He says, even if I want to commend myself, even if I want to boast, I will boast in Christ Jesus. You know, some people, if they do a little thing, they want the world to know that they've done this. 
the field on top of the world. Everything they're doing, people know. And the only time they get joy is when they say, oh, you did this, you did. Although they look humble, but what gives them inner joy is to do what? Boast. And compare. See, it's all compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. When you compare yourselves, not wise. May we pray today that the Lord will give us his wisdom. Amen. Give us his wisdom. Whatever you are doing, do it well. There's no reason to compare. There's no to you and there's no to them. So that's why the Bible says here, and those that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Because that's what brings about judgment. That's what brings about you didn't get it, you got it. So why did you do it this way? Proverbs 30:12, the Bible says, There is a generation that appear in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation. They are not washed from their filthiness. They are pure in their own eyes. Now it's easy to preach this. It's one thing to sit down and say, hang on, let me take a critical look at myself. Critical look at myself. You know, some people, when they, they talk about, oh, critical this and that or that, you're too critical and everything. But when you go on to today's world, they are looking at people who are critical thinkers, who will do critical analysis so that they can do a proper sieving and take out the chaff. <laughs> Did you see that? Not in the negative sense, but in the positive. It's quite very good. If you do, if you look at yourself on the surface and says, oh, I do not see Satan will take hold and wouldn't allow you to see what is wrong. If you live in bubble, oof, you'll be floating. We'll only be seeing your roundness in the air, but we can't catch you. The Bible says, if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. It's better to sit down and look and say, yeah, that's fine. This thing I'm looking at, this thing I want to pick out, how is it in my own life? And the most importantly is to also let people to, how, to look at us. There's nothing wrong in telling the children, how did I perform? How is this? We do it here in our home. Even as I'm here, because it's our manner, there are certain things I will say, oh, mom, that's not the pronunciation. Oh, mom, you didn't get that. Oh, mom, you said this. It should have been this. Brethren, that's the way to learn. If you keep yourself open, and then you will be in a position where you really understand who you are. May the Lord give us the grace. He says here, he says they are pure in their own eyes. So when you're pure in your own eyes, it will be easy to look at others and to condemn them and to pick out things which we ought not to do. So, brethren, what are we talking about? Remember the Jews, those when Jesus were talking, all sorts were in that crowd. Matthew chapter 5 verse 1. That's where we started. It's still the same crowd. It's called a multitude. So he was speaking to everyone. So speaking to all of us today. So not a particular people. So not A or B or C. The Lord is speaking to all of us. Speaking to me and speaking to you. So um, don't be too particular on what people have done wrongly, what they've said wrongly, um, what they've won wrongly. Ah, even up to, I know some years ago I wrote it here in my book, somebody said to me, oh, I hate to see ladies' labels sticking out of their dresses. That was quite fine. You hate that. But you would have gone close to say, oh, your label is sticking out. They may have put on the dress, their newly a bought dress, and they are quite happy because it fits well, and they want to wear it, and then here they go in a hurry, they out. They didn't say it. It's too small to cause an offense. 
label is too small but in your eyes it may mean oh they're trying to show off they're being proud maybe or but it may not take it in the simple way who loves to see label their label sticking out it means that they didn't um, take time to dress well look well you see all that things so not everybody is so proud of course if you want to show off what you're wearing and from the store then you can take it out and put it on as a badge of honor so we know that you bought it from that and then actually you can put the <laughs> i'm laughing you can put the cost 250 pounds for the for that blouse and that's it and all that people will look at it what vanity so nothing is in this world so so many things so little some people will come, oh, I don't like the way people, you know, look. It gets to my nerve. Ask the Lord to help you. Because you're also looking in a, in, a, in a different way. And they too. Oh, I don't like people wearing yellow. Oh, that's, that's, na, 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 na. I know sometime, you know, in, the, in those days when, I'm, I, I, when I was at work, someone, someone came and says, I hate to see pink, bright pink. I don't like it. So what is it that and people were looking and there was another lady that her favorite color is pink. And each time she wears these beautiful dresses, you can't help but turn around to look at her. She looks so beautiful in her pink. Lovely. And she gets all shades of pink and well sewn. And then everyone, wow. And someone walked up, oh, I hate to see people in pink. Georgine, that's you. She looks beautiful in her pink. Brethren, these are the things that brings about critical spirits among us at school, among friends, at meetings, in the office, among colleagues, at church, in the community. Critical spirit. George and others. Oh, why did they buy a white car? Didn't they see a green car to buy? That's you. You love the green car. They love their white car. I hope the Lord will help us to come out of all these. And some people can argue over milk and cereal, which should come in first. Some will tell you cereal. And some will say, no, you put them all those things. And they, some will come in chicken and egg, which is older. Which is, oh, come on. We've got better things to do. <laughs> Amen. Unless you want to, you know, um, entertain us as comedians, then we can, if we have the time, we watch. But I think there are better things to do. Judging one another, even in little things, ought not to be so... Some theirs is how to grip. Oh, you shook my hand the way you gripped me. It's not strong. It shows that you're a weakling. When I was reading that on, you know, the meaning of shaking hands, when you shake people in a particular way and it shows you're a weakling, it shows you're a strong person, it shows you're a sly person, all those things we've been confused with philosophy and psychology and all those things. It doesn't say that. What is A in one community doesn't mean a in another community they're all different the way you say goodbye to some people when you wave this way it means no 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 and to some people when you do this it means come here so you could see they mean different thing so if you do this and it means bye to you in your culture in another culture it means please can you come may we not judge amen May we be calm and admire each and every one of us. So what was eating wrongly? Can you go? You didn't bake your cake very well. It should have been baked with this thing. It's not done with the other thing. Bread and this can only cause offense among us. It will not build us up. So what is perfectly right with one person is absolutely wrong with another person. Even in dancing, some people dance tap, you know, what do you call it now? Destiny, tap dancing, isn't it? Yeah. With their feet. Yeah. And it's amazing. Wow. The day Destiny brought that to my attention, I was like, what? Group of young men from Ireland and their feet was going. Din, 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 din. And I'm like, how are they doing this? Amazing. It's so fascinating how they could do that. And other people dance with their chest. 
and other people dance and you see the way they go about and if you look at the um the Igbos of the Anambra state of Nigeria the way they dance their these things and then it's like the it's like the most fantastic gymnastic you've ever seen that is it some people when they're talking they are nodding their head they can't keep and you're wondering please keep it steady your neck is it it doesn't pain them that's the way they do that's the way they talk admire them when they are doing it this judging is too much is this judging that has brought about tribalism is this judging that has got divisions in our communities in our countries in everything is this judging that has caused about racism you're green you're yellow you're black is this judging that has brought about hatred i this judging that has even brought about murder judging people it shows the heart a heart that is not right, a heart that is filled with hatred, a heart that is filled with bitterness, jealousy, anger, malice. When you are the judge, judge, judging, you'll be very malicious. And when you're malicious, you will not do things in a balance. You will favor one person and you will not favor the other person because you're, your heart is you're already prejudiced. That's what brings this kind of thing. Bring all manner. Just give it any kind of name. Prejudice. You know, being there, judging people before time. All those things. May the Lord help us. Galatians chapter 6 verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something, but when he is not any, he deceiveth himself. That's it. If you think yourself to be something, you're deceiving yourself. But let a man examine himself. In 1 Corinthians 11, 28, the Bible says, But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. First examine and ask the Lord to deliver you. This is not a good place to be at all. You know, some people say they are worried, they are anxiety, they don't have peace, they don't have, if this is filled in their heart, that heart will not have peace. Their heart will be agitated. That person will be easily offended. That person will always be frowning. They can't smile. Even when things happen to them good, their heart is because so many things are inside that heart. Please release that heart today please drop it off we are only here for a season so make the best of it so all these things that have clogged the heart all these things that have you know pushed it let's take them off second corinthians 13 5 says examine yourself whether ye be in faith prove your own selves know ye not know ye not your own selves how that christ is in you except ye be reprobates know yourself we have to, to what are we talking about here we are not likely to see things on our faces unless somebody tells us if we have a mirror we can see but if we're in a hurry and rush out of the room we might not see it and that's why jesus is saying how will thou say to thy brother let me pull out the moat out of thy eye and behold a beam big one is in my own eyes all around me i'm carrying it and i'm asking my brother can i remove this tiny thing in your own eyes the big one in mine i don't see them because i can't jesus says take out the one first look at yourself first how can i appreciate people how can i add value to other people how can i make them comfortable when they're next to me how can i be the best how can i consider them how can i look in to see how i can help them how can i be a pleasant person how can i show love these are the things he says when you are doing these things you can see you wouldn't see the moat in other people's eyes and at the same time be open so that people can help you verse 5 thou hypocrite first cast out the beam out of thy own eye and then thou shalt see clearly 
Thou shalt see clearly. That's where Jesus prayed for Peter and said, Peter, Peter, I have prayed for you. Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. When you are delivered, strengthen your brethren. You can only strengthen people when you're delivered. You can only be, you know, add value to people when you tell them, look, don't do this. Don't drink with this cup. I have one like it at home. And I can tell you what it is made of. Because you're aware. Because you've known. And that's the only way you can help others. Amen. The Bible says, first take time. When you are healed from a particular thing, you'll be in a better position to tell other people. When you are delivered from a certain thing, you'll, be in a, you'll tell them. You know, when I look at my children, I'll tell them, look, you can't do this. They say, oh, mom, why? I said, look at the reason. At your age, I did this. When I was this, look at the way. It's still thing. It's a generational thing. When you grow out of this age now you will look back and say that you wouldn't have done oh okay why because i went through it i'm now delivered out of it so brethren this is what the lord is saying to us and this is what jesus is saying let us not be hypocrites that look at other people condemn other people judge them but we do the same in our houses we take joy in doing it what man know it himself except the spirit of god in our lives and today what is the what? let's all now take time to pray and to say god help me in any way i have not acted in a charitable way i've been very uncharitable um to people and then i've been so proud i've seen myself as the best and then I've taken time to put other people down and feel in my own ways. Therefore, I don't see my own mistakes and things I'm doing wrongly. Have mercy on me. Forgive me, Lord. Give me the grace to be charitable. Give me the grace to be tolerant. Give me the grace to accommodate. Give me the grace to forbear and bear other people. Give me the grace, Lord, to show love. Even as I'm correcting, may I correct other people in the spirit of meekness, considering myself. And brethren, remember what we are talking about here is not those that use judging as a blackmail. Oh, don't judge me. They, why, why they are saying it is to shut you. Why they are saying it is to continue in the wrong they are doing. We are not talking about those. We are talking about having a large heart to show love. And love will help you to correct someone in the spirit of meekness. Father, we thank you this morning and we bless you, Lord, for your word. All we ask, O oh God, that your power, your love will touch our own hearts so that we will be like you. Lord, if you had judged us, we wouldn't have been here. The whole world would have been destroyed. We wouldn't have been saved. Therefore, Lord, take away critical spirit. Oh, Lord, that see only wrong, wrong, wrong in people. Give us heart to love. And when it comes to correction, that we may correct in spirit of meekness. We correct out of love. Lord, we will take time to win the person over. Precious Father, help us, Lord, not to be proud in ourselves, not to esteem ourselves more highly than we are. But, Lord, give us the grace to be lowly or to be lowly at heart, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us this morning. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.